Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a couple of cards that I made for this week's color throwdown challenge. And like always, I will have a link to the challenge in my blog post, which is linked in the description box below the video. Challenge is just for fun. There's a new one every week. And it's a good way to think outside the box in terms of color. And even if you don't want to necessarily play along as in like during the time because you can submit your um, little creation. All the info is on the color throwdown like blog, but it's good for inspiration to see what other people have come up with, you know, with that color combo, etc. So I pulled out one of the newer Honeybee Lovely Layers. This is the Sweetheart Roses die set. I love me. They're Lovely Layers sets. I have an entire playlist on my channel, which I'll hopefully remember to link to it at the end of the video, of just cards and whatnot that I've made using some of their Lovely Layers die sets, because there's a lot of them, and they're just fabulous. So I did ink smushing and yeah, die cutting and splattering and heat embossing and all the things. So if you keep watching, I'll show you guys how I made these cards. I've talked about and shown in many of my videos how I generally like to die cut first and then either do my ink smushing, coloring, blending, whatever it is I want to do to said die cuts. However, with a set like this, this Lovely Layers Sweetheart die set, there are a lot of very small pieces and I don't have the patience to deal with that many little pieces, you know, to add color to individually in this way. So it's much easier to do just backgrounds of ink smushing. So that's what I did. And I'm working on uh, one of my non-stick craft mats because as always, surface does matter. And I actually show a little later, I'm going to use this this exact same ink. This is bundled sage distress ink. I'm going to use this ink on my glass work surface. You get a totally different result when you spray it with water. When you're using a craft sheet like this, um, distress ink specifically beat up. Because I'm actually going to use a different ink in a minute. And it's just, it's fascinating how different ink formulas react, how they play, how they work. Um, yeah, there's, there's no right or wrong in this sense. If, especially when it comes to like ink smushing, use what you've got. If it's a water reactive ink, you can still get great results. They're just going to be different. That's all the best, you know, the inks that were made for it, obviously were distress inks. They were formulated specifically for like doing things like this. You can see at the minute I spray water after smushing the ink pad, they bead up very sort of unique in a sense. But anyway. I used bundled sage for the first background and I've just super sped this up because I'm not doing anything groundbreaking. I'm just doing like one color blends. And um, so I did bundled sage for my greenery and then I used aged mahogany here for one of the panels. And yeah, just drawing in between layers. You smush the ink pad, spray it with some water. I'm using distress watercolor paper, press it in, dry. Because wet on dry layers, wet on wet blends. So this color, you can see it looks different. It's different. It's a different formula. I used um, Concord 9th's Briar Rose ink. And I've done a lot of ink smushing with the Concord 9th inks and Simon Says Stamps Positively Saturated inks. Those two are kind of interchangeable in my opinion. Um, but they're different. They are a different formula. You know, they're they're meant to be different. They're meant to like smooth out when you stamp with them and blend with them, et cetera, et cetera. And also I've noticed these inks, like the Concord and Ninth inks and Simon's Positively Saturated inks, these ones tend to seep into the fibers of these nonstick craft sheets and stain them, which I'm fine with. I'm just mentioning it because I know some people, it really bugs them. But our tools are meant to be used. And it just, it was, it's just something interesting. I was like, huh. The f it just fascinates my nerd brain. I'm like, this is cool. So anywho, I did the ink smushing with that color because that's the color I wanted. And I, I actually off camera, I have another panel of the bundled sage one because I ended up doing more die, cut die cutting than I planned. What was originally starting out as one card ended up turning into two cards because that's just where things went. So I did all my die cutting. And with this set, you have this large cluster, which you can see here, that is like the stems and the leaves for these roses. And then there's an individual wafer die that die cuts some of these extra leaves that you layer on top. 
and a couple of the bits that you use for the um, the little buds of the roses. And you could skip this step. Like if you want to do ink smushing, it all looks great. What I love the most about it is you get all that like texture and, and speckly bits and it just, it's fun, you know? Could you just die cut it from solid cardstock? Totally. I've done that with the lovely layers. They look amazing too, especially like the more newer sets there there's more and more like detail and debossing and just oh, I love it I love it anyway um I'm not showing anything like I don't even want to say groundbreaking but when it comes to like layering how to layer these pieces together because again all these pieces because they're so textured on camera it you're not really seeing seeing it you know um but honeybee does provide layering guides like a nice visual, which I love because I, I always need those visuals, you know, but just like all the other lovely layer sets, this one is no exception. It looks overwhelming, but all the pieces, you go largest to smallest, they layer up. There's little reference points. It just makes sense. And again, you can see it better in real life. My camera's not picking up the little, the little debossed lines and details that I'm following. I was like, oh, this goes here. This goes here. Simple. And with this set as well, each of the clusters of dies, because there's the, you know, the individual die sets, are all the pieces for each floral, you know, and then there's one wafer die that has all the pieces for all the individual leaves and then the two little green bits for the buds. So it really just, it's all kind of done for you. And that's, that's why I love these sets. Because <laughs> again, yeah, for me, I don't care. I, I do this as a job, you know, I'm all professional. I'm using like asterisks here, but I like when things are done for me. <laughs> The less thinking I have to do, the better. So I just went through and added ink blending to these individual pieces. Again, a little bit tedious, but I was just, that was the mood I was in, you know? So I just stuck the, the pieces to one of my little paper inking palettes. Grip mats work too, sticky mats, any of those things. And I just used the exact same colors of ink. So for the greenery, I used the bundled sage. For the red roses, I used my aged mahogany. And then for all of the pink ones, I used that briar rose ink. And I just used one of my little waffle flower um, shader brushes and just added that little extra bit again. Was it 100% necessary? Eh, could, could have left it, could have done it, whatever's floating your boat, you know? And then it was when I was die cutting the, the pink and red backgrounds. That's when I was like, ooh, I've got extras. So I ended up, you know, using every little piece up, die cut them all. So I ended up having enough to do three um clusters of these um roses and everything and these little buds same thing you go like basically largest to smallest and then this is where you grab the the two little funky pieces from the leaves they're and again they just they fit it just makes sense you know so you'd hear those and then you've got your little buds aren't they so cute so i even um die cut the scraps and i had to kind of like piece together the final one of this cluster because the, the the scraps weren't big enough to die cut it in full but because these were all done you know with ink smushing and there's all this texture I was just like well I'll just glue them together you know I'll just glue these random two together kind of Frankenstein them together and it worked so I was like there we go so I have three clusters in the end with all their little all their little bits and pieces so this just this just worked you know things just evolved to this point <laughs> So once I got the leaves adhered into place, then it, this all kind of makes a lot more sense once you kind of get the flowers in place. Because again, it's a little weird looking at it. Um, one, on camera, and two, with, yeah, all the, the texture bits kind of are distracting the eye. But once you get the, you know, the pieces adhered, it's like, oh, okay, I see what we're, you know, going for here. So I mix and matched the different shades of the little roses and buds and adhered them into place. The largest one doesn't technically have a placeholder on these, which is kind of nice because then you can kind of stick it where you want. So I didn't adhere those down until I actually adhere these to the card fronts. So I only adhered the ones that actually had placeholders on these die cuts. And then for my backgrounds, I use the Lace Heart Layering Frames wafer dies. And again, I've talked about this, like this debossing is, oh, seriously, you know, I just, I'm loving it. I love it. I love the detail. It, you know, and again, it takes no effort. 
on my part. So I love it even more. <laughs> you just run that die cut through your machine and it's like it just does all the work for me. So I took more distressed watercolor paper and I die cut the background from that. And this is where I use the bundled sage just on my glass work surface. And you saw when I sprayed it with water, it just pools up. It doesn't bead because the surface is different. But for the this um, like scalloped rectangle, I didn't want like a lot of speckly, fleckly bits, you know? I just wanted the color and a bit of texture. So that's why I just use my glass work surface. I use my fingers even and just kind of applied um, that bundled sage ink more so around like kind of the perimeter because the center you're not going to see because I'm going to add this panel which was used with the same die set the lace heart layering frames because there's this one and then there's like some heart shapes and whatnot and that I die cut from um, some ivory cardstock and this was the this one was really hard to show on camera this one also has a bunch of that debossing detail and it's it's just gorgeous like I love it I love it so I wrapped some twine around that panel and then I adhered it to the background. And then I'd done, by this point I had figured out, I was like, okay, I got more than enough. I can do two cards. So I did a second um, background in the same way using the, the scalloped rectangle frame, added the bundled sage ink, did the ivory card stock with the die cut, etc. And then for one of the cards I'm showing here, I'm just going to adhere one of these clusters of the roses just kind of as is I had to zhuzh it around the twine a bit and get that little bow pulled out so it actually you know is in the front and then adhered this um, little cluster adhered the rose and then the second cluster I snipped it apart so that I could adhere it um, kind of in the upper corner and then the final little piece I ended up adhering in the opposite little corner there. So just to kind of fill out this entire card front. And then it started making me think of like, you know, a rose trellis. I planted a climbing rose. Was it last year? I can't remember if it was last year. I think it was the year before. I caught one at Costco. I've been having good luck getting stuff when our local Costco greenhouse gets things. I don't know. They seem to like, I, I've talked about this. I have a black thumb when it comes to like act, real plants in real life. Um, but the ones I pick up at Costco generally, I don't know. They just seem to be hardier, most likely because they're, you know, sitting in a warehouse. But anyway, I planted a climbing rose. So far it survived. We'll see if it survived this, our crazy winter that we've had this year. Because, yeah, I've got a, a couple other rose bushes growing in my backyard, but they're kind of on their last legs. And those were Costco specials too, I think. <laughs> but roses are finicky. They're, they're uh, at least for me, they're, they're difficult, but I love them. They're so beautiful. Anyway, anyway, I did a little selective trimming here and there, you know, and adhered the, these pieces to this background. And then I flipped it around and then just used my little detail cutting scissors to trim off the little bits that were hanging off the edges. And then I grabbed what, yeah, blah, 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 can't speak. Uh, one more piece of distressed watercolor paper. And I just kind of um, distressed it up a bit with antique linen distress ink. And same thing, just used it on my glasswork surface just to add a little bit of color. And for this, I'm going to die cut the, like, kind of the planter or urn from the Lovely Layers Sweetheart Roses die set. So I added this bit of ink to the distressed watercolor paper, dried it completely, and then die cut it. And then once these pieces were die cut, I'm going to build my little like flower pot. And this will be for the second card front and that final little sprig of roses. So adhering everything together with my craft tacky glue and same thing. This one's got some deboss detail on it that just, yeah, you know, it just works. I love it. So you can 100% skip if you're not into things like ink smushing and adding all the texture and whatnot, like just die cutting it from just solid cardstock, you know, because the detail is just there. So did a little bit more selective snipping on this cluster so I can adhere it to the background. And then I'm going to adhere the little urn and the kind of tuck it under that one little leaf cluster there. And once that's adhered into place and then get those leaves where I want them, I can adhere that individual like larger, um, larger little rows. And then that's going to base basically finish off the second card front. But after I do the sentiments, I was like, I, cause I, you guys know, I was thinking about it like splatter, splatter all the things. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I got that adhered. And then um, for my sentiments, I used the lean on each other uh, sentiment set. And I picked out a couple of the sentiments that I wanted to use. And I'm going to heat emboss these onto some Briar Rose cardstock from Concord and Ninth. So got those centered onto my Misty. And then I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool on the cardstock to keep the embossing powder from sticking to anything other than the stamp sentiments. And then when I ink up and stamp these sentiments, I'm using some white pigment ink. And I'm very lightly inking these up. So I'm going to lightly ink it up and stamp it. And I'm going to do this multiple times. These are very detailed sentiments, you know, very fine lines, very detailed. So I'm using a very light hand. And it kind of almost doesn't look like anything, but I'm just going to build this up just slightly because I don't want to smush my ink pad like into the stamps and you don't want to smush the stamps onto the cardstock because, you know, you press them down with, you know, good quality photopolymer. They have a bit of give to them. And if you want to retain that detail. So having that little bit of patience and stamping it multiple times just worked. And then I coated them with um, Simon Says Stamps Detail Cream Embossing Powder. So just, just a little more subtle than like stark white. Melted it with my heat tool. Once those are melted, I'm gonna use the coordinating wafer dies to die cut both of these sentiments. And then I'll come back to these in a minute, but I also die cut scraps of the same cardstock with those wafer dies to give them more dimension. So I'll come back to that in a minute because at this point I was like, yep, splatter, must be done. <laughs> so I pulled out uh, my aged mahogany distress paint. You can use inks for splatter, but if I can avoid it, I do. Because sometimes inks splatter great, other times they just, they'll absorb funny into cardstock and they just won't look right and it bugs me. So I've got pretty much all of the distress colors in the paint and that's pretty much all I ever use distress paint for splatter because it works. It's great. The only thing you got to remember is distress paint dries permanent. So you want to always wash out your brushes. So I put a little drop of that on my palette, used my little fan brush, watered it down a tiny bit, splatter those backgrounds, cleaned everything off and then let those dry. And then my card bases are top folding A2 note cards made from the same ivory card stock that I used on the card fronts. And I put those into my Misty and I stamped a couple more sentiments from that lean on each other stamp set. And I inked up the first part with the Briar Rose ink. And then the second sentiment I inked up with the aged mahogany ink and stamped that onto the inside of both of these cards. So once that's stamped, I uh, the splatter is dry and I can adhere these card fronts to the card bases. Again, just used craft tacky glue because this big like scallop wafer die from the lace heart layering frame set is pretty much like A2 style. A2 sized. So it takes up the whole card front. Love it. And then I can adhere the the scraps that I die cut with the coordinating wafer dies for the sentiments. So layer those together to give them that dimension. And then for this one, um, because it's layering over top of some of those other die cuts, I'm going to use just little bits of um, foam squares that I trim down just to even everything out so that this lays like flat. So stuck those on the back of this sentiment. And then once I had everything where I wanted it, added a little bit of craft tacky glue to the one end that's going to layer on top of those die cuts and then pop that into place. And then for the other sentiment, same thing. I'm just going to stack the layers together. And then this one, um, I can adhere just as is to the background because there was more open space for it. So I got those three layers stuck together with the craft tacky glue and then stick this into place onto, um, onto the card front. And both of these sentiments were like friendship themed. The first one was you were just the, fr you were just the friend that I needed. And then this sentiment that I'm adhering together says you make such a difference in this world. And I was like, oh, I love these sentiments. And then on the inside, it says, I can't count. Uh, I can't count how many times you've been there for me, but I'll never forget a single one. And I was like, oh, love it. Love it. Such good sentiments. So got those all adhered into place. And then as my final little bit of embellishment, I'm using some of the Vintage Love Pearl stickers, which again, pat myself on the back because I like to hoard these. 
<laughs> love it. They're just, they're just they're so pretty. I can't help it. But I'm I'm working harder at like actually using the things. I can't tell everyone else to you know use the things. Like get out of your head when I don't follow my own advice. So working on it. So anyway. <laughs> pop those into place onto both of these card fronts and that finish them off. So as always, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. You can just expand it. I will have uh, my supply list with affiliate links to all the supplies I used. Affiliate links just means that I get a little commission if you use my links and then place an order at no cost to you. It doesn't cost you anything. I wouldn't use it otherwise. And yeah, that just helps keep, you know, keeps the channel running, keeps the heaters running, all the things. And yeah, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch, for thumbs upping and commenting. Subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.